Hey guys, Brian here from Free Salon Education here, and today I wanted to go over something with you that is gonna help your guests get ready for summer. Even if it's not quite summer yet, and you just want that really nice summer surfboard sun-kissed look, uh, I wanted to bring back our lovely model, Katie. You might recognize her, we've used her before with this hair, how could you not use her over and over again? Uh, but today I wanted to go with something a little bit more natural looking. I've been really enjoying the look of that surfer girl, fresh off a surfboard kind of look, and I knew that Katie's got the perfect hair for that because she's got that natural curl, there's wave in there, there's curl, there's just tons of beautiful texture that I think will just look really, really great with a very sun-kissed look. I'm not gonna be going for a really solid overall blonde look. I want it to have that really lived-in kind of feel that looks like she actually did spend months on the beach. So I also wanted to double with this uh, bringing balayage onto textured hair because we get a lot of requests for how would you do this differently on somebody with curl? Well, now you're gonna get to see. So stay tuned. So here we're starting with two of my absolute favorite products. We've got Sunlight's Balayage Lightener and of course, Olaplex. Uh, I'm a really huge fan of Sunlight's when I do my balayage because it's got this great clay base that as you see, I'll show you as I'm going through how that really plays into helping me create just a, a phenomenal seamless lightened effect. So I've got her sectioned off front to back, quite simple. I went off of her part because I think that's really important to make sure that you keep this natural how she's going to wear it all the time. So the part that she had when she came in is the part that I used when I sectioned off the front. I laid down some of the saran wrap underneath because I like to work cleanly, as cleanly as possible. And uh, the saran wrap that you see, I'm not very good with normal saran wrap, so I really love this perforated saran wrap that the Sunlight's company makes. And we also sell at freesaloneducation.com if you want to give it a try. All right, so with these first few sections that are all the way underneath at the nape of the neck, there, I again, because I'm trying to create a very natural beach lightened look, that beachy blonde, I'm not bringing those highlights all the way to her hairline. It's really just going to be the stuff that is through the ends, that saw the sun a lot over many years of her just hanging out on a beach somewhere in Southern California on a surfboard. So as I move up the back of her head and begin to hit the top of the round of the head, you'll notice that my highlights will start getting closer to her actual scalp. With these, you'll notice also that I'm leaving the center out throughout most of the back of her head. And the reason that's important is because I'm almost creating not necessarily a low light, but a nice shadowed effect with her lightener by leaving that middle section out. That's gonna give <clears throat> some depth and dimension to the highlights as her hair moves around. You'll see in the after uh, what that's gonna look like. So with my sections to describe how I'm holding them, how I'm painting them, <clears throat> I'm doing, I'm making sure that I pay really close attention to my saturation. Something that I learned from Candy Shaw, the, uh, the creator of Sunlight's Balayage, is the thicker the lightener, <clears throat> the lighter it's going to get. So you'll notice that throughout that midsection, all the way through the ends, I've got it really, really thick. You can't see the hair anymore. It almost looks like frosting on a cupcake. But as it gets closer up to where the highlight's going to start, I let it start to taper off and become much less saturated. And why that's really cool to use with Sunlights is because Sunlights has a clay base to it. So it grips onto the hair really great and will lighten whatever it's touching. But the more saturated the lightener is, the lighter that section is going to get. So what I mean is those sections closer to the scalp where I start to thin it out a little bit and it's not quite so thick, that's gonna help to taper off how light it's gonna get as well. So it's really going to help me create a nice, like I said, seamless beach lightened effect. Uh, you'll also notice that I'm taking very thick sections. This will work in two scenarios. Really thick sections like this are gonna work if you're doing balayage on curly hair, which it just so happens I am if you saw on my Instagram, uh, which is hairstyle. Um, you'll see that she actually does have naturally curly hair, and I did diffuse it at one point. We didn't get on the video, but I diffused it just to see. So people ask if you're doing balayage on curly hair, what do you do differently? And what I do differently is I just make sure that I use much thicker sections because 
as we've all seen, when you do foils on curly hair, if your foils aren't thick enough, then you just start to lose them in the curl. They just sort of disappear. So with balayage, if you paint much thicker sections, then you're less likely to actually lose it once the hair curls. It's also going to work when you're doing this effect, the, the beach lightened effect, because you'll notice anybody who's actually gotten the natural highlights from spending a lot of time on the beach, it really is very, very thick, very noticeable blonde. So here I'm, I'm hugging that whole huge section that goes all the way across the back of her head and doing really thick sections along the outside, letting it sort of bleed in. Rather than a hard stripe, you notice those little lines that sort of feather up from that really thick frame that I did. And that's just what's going to help bleed into that nice, beautiful blonde throughout the ends of her hair. So I'm holding my section straight out from the head, as nice and taut as I can get it, because I want that hair to be sitting just as, as straight as I can. If the hair is curly, then just get it as tight as you can so that there's not a lot of wiggle, so that you're in control of where that painting goes. Because, you know, wherever you put this lightener, it's going to lighten, so you really want to try to be in as control as possible. So I'm holding that section nice and tight, and I'm just framing the outside of the section, leaving the center to really come down and show off her natural a little bit. And what you'll notice on these sections, I'm not really painting the underside. I'm just doing that nice, thick, like, cupcake frosting along the top and letting the underside stay what it is. And what that's going to do after this is all said and done, it's going to act as almost a little shadow of a low light of her natural in through the lengths of her hair, which is going to keep it still looking supernatural. Obviously, if you were going for a full-out ombre, you would want to make sure that the undersides of all of your sections were saturated. But, like I said, this is really more, hopefully, just that, that nice beachy look. So, as I'm really getting up to the top of her head, those highlights are getting much closer to the root. Again, still tapering it off. I'm not looking to have just a really hard line of start where the highlight starts. I want it to taper back to her scalp. So getting closer as you near the top of the head, but still tapering it off. And you'll notice as I start to get to the end of the section, I use the paddle, also can be found at freesaloneducation.com, to hold the end of the hair so that I can paint all the way through the tips. I do know that that does saturate the backside of the end of the hair a little bit, which is totally fine. I've just noticed that with balayage lighteners, it's their job to sit on the surface and lighten where you put it. They're not really meant to be expected to saturate through a section. So leaving it just on top pretty much guarantees that that's just where it's going to stay. So I don't have to worry about it, you know, bleeding through into the bottom of the section. I know a lot of people, if you're uncomfortable with balayage or you're new to it, this looks a little scary doing these, these huge stripes of blonde. But when you work with a superior product like this, you'll see exactly, you know, how it just, it comes out so seamless and so effortless and just looks beautiful. And if some of you recognize Katie, I used her as my ombre model a few years ago. So there is a little bit of pre-lightened fabric through the ends of her hair. And this is where I'm so thankful for Olaplex because I ended up, we, she didn't even get a haircut after we did this lightening service. And you can see I paint through the ends on everything. But that bond rebuilder just helped to make sure that I didn't cause any unnecessary damage. And I was able to just take the blonde a little bit further. This top section at the high point of the head, I actually did the opposite of what I did on everything else. And rather than framing the outside, I brought that highlight right through the middle and then had it sort of fan out and fatten out on its own to get this whole section. Because that being the high point of her head, that's definitely going to see lots of sunlight um, in, a, in a, a real beach-lightened scenario. Whether her hair is pulled back or her hair is down, that spot's pretty much always going to get sun, so that spot's always going to be light. Plus, you can see that section underneath where I've got that framed piece of her, her natural Bringing that highlight straight through the center is really going to help showcase because when you've got that dark up against that light, it's what makes the light look lighter and brighter, which is always helpful. As we move into the front, rather than just coming straight out from her head, 
I, again, we were trying to keep this as natural looking as possible. So in a scenario where, say, she's on a beach or just really out in the sun a lot, she would be brushing her hair away from her face, whether it's back in a ponytail or just using her hands to bring it off of her face, which means most of her hair will be going back for a lot of the time that she spends out in the sun. So that means I'm going to bring the hair back when I'm lightening it myself. So I'm holding still nice and taut, straight out from the head, but I'm over-directing everything back. So that as I paint it, when her hair is up, you'll see those highlights running back away from her face. And when she wears it down, they'll just be running along the layers through the lengths of her hair. Because this hair is typically a little bit finer on most people around the, f around the whole hairline of the face there, that hair is going to naturally get a little bit lighter when they spend time outdoors. So that would make sense that I would want to spend a little bit more time getting a little more blonde when I'm creating it myself. So as you see here, I'm bringing those sections a little bit closer to the scalp than I did in the back of the head and painting it just a little bit more, painting it with a little bit more coverage because I do want her blonder around her face. This angle you can't quite tell, but I do remember. Uh, you, I, I brought the section, like the side of the section that you can see, which is closer to her face, I brought much closer to the actual hairline. And in the back, I didn't quite bring it up as high. Because in a scenario where the sun's hitting her face, it's going to lighten what's around her face. And it's not going to lighten what's behind that quite as much. So the section in the back isn't always brought as close to the scalp as the section by the face. Again, even when you're taking nice thick sections, you want to make sure that you paint down as you move up. That's what's going to help you taper off that section. So I'm stroking down with the brush, and you'll, well, you'll see when I'm around the, the scalp area, but I paint down as I move upward, and that's what gives me that it allows me to taper off what I'm lightening so that I can get in there and have the, the finer highlights around the face. Also with these sections, I rather than just grabbing the end to let it saturate, I'm coming up just a little bit higher because like I said, I want, I want a little bit stronger of a presence with this blonde. So I'm taking out all of those sections that are closest to the face because that's definitely getting much more coverage, much much more effort in the lightening to make sure that it stays soups blonde. Some of the sections that I'm grabbing here, because I, again, it's not an exact map that has to always be the same thing every time. Sometimes I'm grabbing sections that, you know, along the scalp it looks like a big square or a triangle or a hexagon. And like this one is a nice wide rectangle. So I went through and actually painted all of the corners of the rectangle and then just brought that lightener down through the lengths of the hair so that I'll have that shadow in the center, but those highlights running through the lengths to those nice super blonde ends. I love hand painting highlights because it just gives so much freedom and allows for a customization that is just unparalleled with anything else because I, I'm picking up where there's layers cut into her hair. I'm looking at, you know, exactly where I think there should be a little bit more light or maybe I can not highlight this section so hard and really just personalize it for her and what's going to work best. Again... Absolutely loving using the Sunlight's Balayage Lightener. Uh, it's got such a phenomenal consistency. I, I love doing a one-to-one -one ratio because then when I add in my eighth of an ounce of Olaplex, it's just this beautiful, beautiful consistency that just glides over the hair so nicely and just gives a really, really fantastic consistency that I know I'm going to get the lightness that I'm looking for. I used 40 volume on this one because, you know, when you use Olaplex, you need to consider it as going one, one level down as far as the developer you use. So it's almost like using a 30 by adding the Olaplex in. But I knew that that would be enough to get her the lightness that I was looking for. So as you can see here, when I laid down my sections, 
you can already see where there's going to be that lightness with the shadow directly behind it, which is going to give it that even brighter effect, that really fantastic beach blonde look. I mean, it's, it's the only way that I, I can think to keep describing this because, you know, everyone loves that hair. It's the, the Abercrombie look, the Hollister look, you know, and it's just such a, a beautiful example of a way to have a very natural looking blonde while still having a really nice brightness in there and, and still pulling off natural. So the parts, the sections of hair right along her part, I always make sure that I do a very heavy highlight because those sections are what see the sun the most. They're what, you know, get the, the most time out, you know, in the sun. So they're going to get the lightest. So I want to make sure that when I'm creating that myself, that's what gets the lightest. So it's highlights right next to each other. It's big, bold painting, making sure that you get it, you know, just through and through to really achieve that fresh off the surfboard look. So just finishing up this last side here. When doing any kind of balayage or ombre, I always make sure that I do the larger side of the part first because there tends to be more of the fully matured hair, whereas the smaller side of the part, you know, is going to have the, uh, a lot more of, you know, that, that, that more baby hair, the finer hair that's going to lighten quicker anyway, so it pretty much all catches up and lightens at the same point. Um, and I, I get asked the question a lot, so I'll go ahead and answer it now. One of the things that I do love about the saran wrap, no, it does not incubate like foil does, but it's there to help. I notice it helps just to keep the moisture in so that lightener, the lightener doesn't dry out. Uh, and it also is just going to help me work neatly. You know, if I've got that really thin layer of saran wrap in there, it's going to keep it so that when I lay a section down, it doesn't press against the section below it. Because as you can see, I'm doing her whole head. And if it was all just laying on each other, then the stuff underneath would really get quite a bit of weight and quite a bit of pressure down on it. So... This just helps me not have to worry about, you know, any anything touching anything that I don't want it to. Again, I'm a total control freak, and this is fantastic because I have absolute control using these tools. That's also the Candy Shaw Sunlight's brush and paddle that I'm using. I do love that brush for any of my balayage work because it's got the nice long bristles, and they're just the perfect tension for applying that lightener and they I mean they stay in fantastic condition I've washed them a thousand times and the bristles still look great and still do a really great job for me so again you can get them on the website I love it and as you'll see in a moment it totally works so again I'm just coming through and I, I made sure that because this is the lighter side of the part that I kept consistent with the blonde as far as making sure that she doesn't appear darker on the side that has less hair. So there might have been a couple of sections where, you know, I brought the highlights up a little higher than maybe I did on the other side just to make sure that there is a full balance of everything. This is my last section. I personally like to try to somewhat match up my highlights on either side. You see that none of these highlights go all the way down to the scalp, but I was conscious of what was going on on the other side of the head so that I it was it was kind of a mirror image, you know, because if she's sitting in the sun, it's going to be a, a pretty similar, you know, effect of, that's going to lighten on both sides of that part. So I try to do something about the same with uh, with my lightener itself. So here she is to process with her saran wrap. We processed her about 45 minutes. And uh, here's what she came out to be. All right, so here we are. As you can see, we've got a nice light beachy. There's lots of actual dimension in there where I brought her color into it. So it's going to be very low maintenance for her. And I want to give her a little bit of a spin. Because one of my favorite looks when you do balayage is when it's nice and blown out like this. And then as you just start to bring your hands through it, let me just step across. When you come through it and the hair gets to move a little bit, you see how that lightness just frames the layers and really just makes it so much more interesting to look at. And unlike some of the other times that we've done balayage here, 
you can see where I really went in and tried to leave a lot of her natural to really give that shadowed look because that, that natural beach lightened look is not everything. It really is just more that outer layer, the hair around the face. So even as we come around to the back, you can see in here we really left a nice shadow through the center of what really wouldn't see the sun that much if she was on a surfboard all summer, which is what we're trying to create. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and actually give it that typical beach look. And I'm going to use a wand to wrap the hair around so you get to see that probably in super fast forward and just give it more of that beachy look for you guys. So here's your super fast forward. It's kind of funny because the way that I did this, I used the Paul Mitchell Neuro iron, the, the larger of the two rods, and I used the larger end towards her scalp always and the smaller end towards the ends. And it looks funny and weird and stop animation because what I did is each time I would wrap it around, I would pause because the hair towards the root, I wanted to get more heat because I wanted her ends to not curl as tightly. So she's just got more of a wave that sort of tapers off into just, you know, the hair just being loose, like that beachy kind of look. I didn't want a very structured curl uh, to also make sure that it didn't fall in too overdone. I have my curls constantly alternating. I don't have two curls sitting next to each other going in the same direction so that they'll always bounce off of each other and create a nice beachy tousled texture. For her finishing look, I went in and I used two of my new faves. I used the Lanza Keratin Healing Oil to just get a nice softness through there and the Label M Texturizing Volume Spray to give a really great, just uh, messy kind of texture without necessarily the wet effect that you can get from a lot of surf sprays. And I was just really, really happy with how this came out. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Be sure to check us out at freesaloneducation.com. Check out my Instagram at, at hairstyle, but H-A-I-R-E. You'll see it on my arm here in just a second. And uh, check out our videos. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. All right, thanks. Bye.